Welcome to Electrical Circuit Analysis. Throughout this lecture, I'd like to request you to pause the video whenever you need it and keep pen and paper with you so that we can solve problems to consolidate our understanding. In order to master nodal analysis, at first you need to know how to solve a system of linear equations in a calculator. So what is a system of linear equations in the first place? So a system of linear equations with two variables takes this form. So a1x1 plus b1x2 is equal to c1 and a2x1 plus b2x2 is equal to c2. Here a1, b1, c1 and a2, b2, c2 are constants and x1 and x2 are variables. So this is a system of linear equations with two variables. In order to solve two variables, solving means determining the values of x1 and x2. In order to solve a system of linear equations with n variables, you need n equations. So here we have two variables, which means uh, you need two equations to solve this uh, system of linear equations with two variables. Here is another example of a system of linear equations with three variables. So the, the basic idea is that one needs n equations to solve for n unknown. So if you don't know how to solve this with the calculator, I'm going to have to request you to pause this video and find that out first, and then continue watching this video. Okay, so to understand nodal analysis, uh, we need to understand another concept as well. Uh, it's called the reference node. So the reference node is commonly known as the ground, since it is assumed to have a zero potential. So in nodal analysis, the node voltages are computed with respect to a reference point or ground. And that we assume when doing nodal analysis that the voltage of that reference node or ground is zero. And all volt nodal voltages are measured with respect to that reference node. So the, these are the common symbols of a uh, reference node or ground. Uh, this is the most common one. So we need a reference, we need to select one of the nodes as a reference node. That's the first thing you need to remember. The second thing is that the voltage of the reference node is zero volt and the third point that you have to remember is all the nodal voltages that we are trying to compute are with respect to the reference node okay so here are the steps of nodal analysis so so the first step of nodal analysis is to identify all the nodes so let's say we have n nodes we select one of these nodes as our reference node. So we're assuming that the potential of that reference node is zero volt, and all the node voltages of the remaining nodes will be measured with respect to that reference node. Then we assign voltage values V1, V2, V3 up to Vn minus 1. It should be Vn minus 1 here, excuse me for the typo, to all the non reference nodes. Again, these nodes our voltages with respect to the uh, reference nodes. And then we apply uh, KCO in each of the n minus 1 non reference nodes by considering that the current is always leaving the node. If you haven't watched my lecture on KCO and KVO, please feel free to check it out. And then we solve the resulting systems of linear equations to determine the unknown node voltages. So these are the four steps of nodal analysis or node voltage method. So if you find it confusing, don't worry, bear with me. We're going to talk about an example to see how it really works. So here for instance we have three nodes in this circuit, one, two, and three. I've taken the bottom node here as the reference node and I'm assuming that the voltage of node 1 is V1 and the voltage of node 2 is V2 and V1 and V2 is measured with respect to the ground or reference node 
what I'm going to do next is I'm going to apply KCL at node 1 and write the equation and then I'm going to apply KCL at node 2 to obtain another equation so we have two unknowns v1 and v2 and two equations so we can set up our systems of linear equation with two variables and solve it using a calculator or other computer aids so let me talk about the KCL in detail so we're trying to write the KCL at node A node 1 excuse me we see the 5 ampere is entering the node which means minus 5 is leaving the node so we write minus 5 here and the current out of node 1 is goes from left to right here in this branch and we know the current goes from higher potential to lower potential so V1 minus V2 divided by resistance 4 is a current that goes from left to right in this branch in other words V1 minus V2 by 4 is the current that goes out of node 1 that's why we write V1 minus V2 by 4 divided by 4 similarly uh, we need the current that is going out of node 1 in this branch so we we'll write V1 minus 0 volt divided by 2 as the current that goes from top to bottom in this branch so there you go there is our uh, first equation so again we have two unknowns here V1 and V2 so with one equation we cannot solve this we need another equation that's why we need to take KCL at node 2 in a similar way. Also note that with node 1 we have three branches connected. This one, this one, and this one. And we have three terms in the equation as well. I think there is a one extra plus here. Please uh, excuse me for the typo. So the bottom line is if we have n number of branches connected to a node we get n terms in our KCL. So here we have three branches, this one, this one, and this one. We have one current corresponding to each of these branches. Also note that this is each of these terms here are current. So this is a current, this is a current, this is a current. So each term of a KCL is a current. And make sure you don't add current plus voltage because you, you can only add similar quantities. You cannot add uh, a current and voltage. So all these terms here are currents. Okay, let's apply KCL at node 2. We see that 5 ampere is leaving, so we write plus 5. We say 10 ampere is entering node 2. That means minus 10 is leaving, so we write minus 10 here. And we also need to determine the outgoing current in this branch and this branch. So the outgoing current in this branch is V2 minus 0 divided by 6. So this is the term and outgoing current in this branch is V2 minus V1 divided by 4 so which represents this term so again we have four branches coming out of node 2 and we have four terms corresponding to each of these branch branches so if we solve these two equations in the calculator we end up with the node voltages again I'm reminding you that V1 and V2 measured here are with respect to the reference node or ground if you take, you're free to take any one of the nodes as your reference node or ground node. You can take node 2 as a ground, you can take node 1 as a ground. It doesn't matter. But, but if you take a different node as a ground, the answer will be different. So that's another point to remember. Now once you know the node voltages of a circuit, you can determine current in any branch and you can determine the power of any element. So basically we have solved the circuit. Okay, so let's review the steps we just discussed. So the first step is to identify all the nodes. And we select one of the nodes as a reference node. And the second step is to assign voltages V1, V2, V3, Vn minus 1 to all the non-reference nodes. And then we write KCL for each of the non-reference nodes. So if there are n minus 1 non-reference nodes, we need to write n minus 1 KCL. So 1 KCL per node, per non-reference node. 
and we write the case here else by considering that current is always leaving the node. And the last step is to solve the resulting systems of linear equations in a calculator. So hopefully you have a clear idea of nodal analysis. And uh, I want to remind you some of the points that I did discussed in the example. So the number of non-reference nodes is equal to the number of independent equations that will derive. And the uh, reference node or ground will be marked most of the time. If it is not marked, you're free to choose any one of the nodes as a reference node. But more, more often people consider the bottom node as the reference node, but it's not a convention or a rule. You can choose any node as a reference node. And you don't need to solve circuits with more than four net reference nodes because uh, most calculators do not permit solving a system of linear equations with four variables. But you can solve it using computer aid use by using Mathematica or MATLAB. So when you're trying to solve problems by hand, uh, you don't need to solve circuits with more than four non-reference nodes because you cannot solve this in a calculator. Okay, now please pause the video and try to solve this problem, and then we'll match your answers. So please pause the video. So hopefully we've been able to solve this. Here I've given the reference node and I've identified the other node so you don't have to do the first two steps maybe. But uh, in many problems you won't have this uh, reference node and the other nodes marked. So you, you need to learn to identify nodes yourself. So at first we write KCL at node 1 and 1 ampere is entering in this branch which means minus 1 is leaving. And the outgoing current in this branch is V1 minus 0 divided by 2. And the outgoing current in this branch is V1 minus V2 divided by 6. So similarly, we'll apply KCL on this node. The outgoing current in this branch is 4. So we'll write plus 4. The outgoing current in this branch is V2 minus V1. V1 in this branch is V2 minus 0 divided by 7. So this is the term corresponding to that. And the outgoing current in this branch is V2 minus V1 divided by 6. And the corresponding term in the equation is this one. So if we solve this system of linear equations with two variables, we end up with the answer. Another key thing to note that it's whenever you're writing the K KCL for node 1, the voltage of node 1 comes first. So it's v always V1 minus V2, V1 minus something when we're writing the voltage, when we're writing the KCL of node 1. Similarly, when we're trying to write the KCL of node 2, it's always V2 minus something, V2 minus something. So in the KCL, the voltage of your node comes first and then the other node. That's also another easy way to remember this. Here's another problem. Please pause this video and try to solve the problem, and then we'll match your answers. So please pause. So hopefully you've been able to solve this problem. Here are, we have three nodes, one, two, three, and this is a reference node or ground node. And we have another variable here, ix. I have basically replaced this because Ix is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by 2. How do I get that? The direction of Ix is given here, left to right. So when we're trying to determine the, w when we're trying to represent Ix with respect to V1 and V2, we should write V1 minus V2 divided by 2 because the current is flowing from left to right, which means this potential is higher, this potential is lower. So we'll consider this potential V1 as higher and this potential V2 as lower when we are trying to determine Ix from left that goes from left to right. So Ix is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by 2 and that is something I replaced in, in this equation KCL at node 3. Why? Because I already have three unknowns 
v1, v2, and v3. And I have three equations, one, two, three. I don't need an extra unknown to further complicate the thing. An extra unknown means I need four equations to solve. So that's why I eliminated this here, so that we have three equations consisting of only v1, v2, v3, and constant. Okay, so once you solve this, you end up with the nodal voltages. Again, these voltages are computed with respect to the reference nodes, and if you take the reference nodes somewhere else, the node voltages will be different. Did you notice that the problems we have solved so far never had a single voltage source? So the problems in nodal analysis can be of three types. Circuit with no voltage source, that's our case one, and our case two is there is there are voltage sources between a non-reference node and ground. And case three is there are voltage sources, but the voltage source is between two non-reference nodes. So case two is not between non-reference node and ground, and case three is between two non-reference nodes. We've already seen how to solve case one. Moving forward, we'll discuss how to solve cases two and three. So here is an example of case two. So this uh, 10 volt voltage source is connected between non-reference node, node one or node of V1 here, and the ground or reference node. So if a voltage source is connected between the reference node here and the non-reference node, we simply set the voltage at the non-reference node equal to the voltage of the voltage source. So here V1 is equal to 10 volts. We don't even need to write KCO at node 1. So a voltage is basically is making our life easier. Because otherwise we would have to write the KCO at node 1, at node 2, and node 3, and do a lot of algebraic manipulation to end up with three variable systems of linear equation, and then we need to input this to the calculator, and then it gives us the answer. But instead of ca the calculator spitting out the answers, you already have V1 is equal to 10 volt. You can do it by visual observation. So V1 is equal to 10 volt. Because V1 between node 1 and ground there is a voltage source uh, that is 10 volt. Even if you wanted to write KCL uh, like before, you wouldn't be able to write the current of this branch. So how, so how would you write the current of this branch? V1 minus 0 divided by what? We don't know the resistance of this branch, so we can't apply Ohm's law. And we don't even need to write KCL for this because there's a definition of a voltage source. If the negative terminal is 0 volt, the positive terminal of the voltage source has to be 10. And the positive terminal is basically node 1 or node of V1. That's why V1 is 10 volt. So the bottom line is if a voltage source it exists between a non-reference node and the reference node, we set the voltage at the non-reference node equal to the voltage of the voltage source. Now let's look into case two, excuse me, case three. So if the voltage source, be it dependent or independent, is connected between two non-reference nodes. So none of the nodes of the two terminals or ends of the voltage source is a reference node. So what do we do then? So if the voltage source is connected between two non-reference nodes, the two non-reference nodes form a generalized node, also known as a supernode. And to write the KCL for supernode, we need to apply... So, in order to solve the circuit with the supernode, we need to apply both KCL and KBL. So, let's illustrate this with an example to make it clearer. So how do we write the KCL for supernode? So we write the current of this branch, of this branch, and then of this branch, and this branch, and then we set it equals to zero. So V2 minus V1 divided by two is the current of this branch, and 
v2 minus 0 divided by 8 is the outgoing current in this branch so here we have another term and then we write instead of writing another equation for v3 we write this equation combinedly so in other words we're assuming that v2 and v3 are same but they're not really same because otherwise there would have exist a short circuit here so we're just assuming to write this equation that v2 and v3 are same that's why we're writing them together but they're not really same okay so the outgoing current from node 3 is v3 minus 0 divided by 6 so with this term and in this branch, the outgoing current in this branch is V3 minus V1 divided by 4. So there you go, we have covered all the branches. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So we had four branches coming out of the super node, and we have four corresponding terms that represent the currents of these branches. Now we already know that V1 is 10 volt. That leaves us with two unknowns, V2 and V3. However, we cannot solve two unknowns with one equation. So we have two unknowns, V2 and V3. We cannot solve this with one equation. We need another equation. So therefore, for case 3, that is in the case of super node, we KCL alone is not sufficient. And we also need to apply KVL in the loop containing the voltage source. So. This is the reference node, which means this is the negative terminal, so this is the positive terminal. And similarly, this is the negative terminal, and this is the positive terminal. You can write it that way and do and take a KVL by going in the clockwise direction. Again, if you have problems in KVL and KCL, feel free to check out that lecture as well. Or you can just write intuitively, you can see that the positive terminal the voltage source is connected to V2 or node 2 and the negative terminal is connected to node 3 which means from the definition of the voltage this potential V2 is 5 volt higher than V3 so we can write V2 is equals to V3 plus 5 so we, we don't even need to take KVL like by taking the positive by identifying the positive and negative terminals of this resistance and this resistance and then take the K KVL in the usual way. You can just intuitively by visual observation you can write V2 minus V3 is equal to 5. That's also sufficient. So there you have your second equation. So you have now two unknown and unknowns and two equations, one from KCL at super node and another from KVO. And then if you solve it, uh, you get the values of V2 and V3, the unknown voltages. Again, you might be wondering uh, how do we put the polarity signs here across V2 and V3. So again, V2 is measured with respect to ground. So the when we discuss the definition of voltage or polarity, we discuss uh, the node uh, which acts as the reference node is the negative terminal. So this is the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal of, the, of this 8 ohm resistance again for the 6 ohm resistance here we have the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal so there are two ways of applying KVL at super node you can just uh, write down the polarity signs of the resistors here and then take a KVL in the usual way or we can just do an observation and see that okay V2 is 5 volt higher than V3 so we can just write V2 is equal to 5 plus V3. Another point is that we can exclude resistors connected in parallel to the super node. So even if you don't exclude, that's fine, it's going to get cancelled out automatically. But you can exclude resistors connected in parallel to the super node. So here's another example, so please pause this video and try to solve this problem and then we'll match your answers. So please pause. So hopefully you've been able to solve this. So we see that this is the reference node, we have two unknown voltages, V1 and V2 here. 
and between two non-reference nodes we have a voltage source here that indicates this is case 3 so this is the case of super node which means we need to write a KCL for the super node and then we need to apply KVO again so this is the KCL for super node and this is the KVO and if we plot the two equations we get uh, the values, the unknown voltage values V1 and V2 Okay, now here's another important point to consider. So if you have two consecutive super nodes, you must combine them into one super node. So let's say you, you, have, you have a super node between node 1 and 2, and an another super node between nodes 2 and 3. You don't consider them as two separate super nodes. You consider nodes 1, 2, 3 as one super node. However, if you have super nodes between nodes 1, 2, and 3, 4, this means they are not consecutive, you consider them as separate super nodes. So let me illustrate this with an example. So on the left here, we have a circuit where we have two consecutive super nodes. So we have one super node between 1, 2, and we have another super node between 2 and 3. So we don't consider them as two different or separate super nodes. We consider the super node as node V1, V2, and V3 as one super node. And the equation should be something like V1 by 2, V1 minus 0 divided by 2, plus V2 minus 0 divided by 4, plus V3 minus 0 divided by 3 is equal to 0. And we ignore the resistance parallel to the super node, as I just mentioned. Okay, on the right, here we have two non-consecutive super nodes. So here we have a super node between 1 and 2, and we have another super node between 3 and 4. But we need to consider them as separate super nodes. So this is super node 1, and then this is super node 2. So there will be one KCL at super node 1, and there will be another KCL at super node 2. If there was another voltage source between 2 and 3, then all three super nodes 1, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 4 would have been consecutive and then you could have considered all of them as one super node but it's not consecutive it's 1, 2, and 3, 4 it's not 1, 2, and 2, 3 or 2, 3, and 3, 4 so that's why these are two non-consecutive super nodes and they have, they have to be considered as separate super nodes and you need to write uh, KVLs as well so when you have at least one super node in the circuit writing only KCL is not enough you need to take KVL as well to solve the circuit as we discussed before so please pause this video and try to solve this problem and then we'll make your answers okay, so please pause so hopefully you've been able to solve this problem so the voltage V here and current I here will be same regardless of wherever you take the reference node. You can ground here at the bottom, then you know this voltage is 21 volt. Then you only have two unknowns, V1 and V2. Or if you, you can ground here as well, then you know this voltage. This voltage is 9 volt, in which case you have two unknowns again, this one and this one. And, and you have super node as well. So, no matter wherever you choose to ground, it will end up with the same value of V and I. But the actual node voltages could be different for different choices of reference node or ground. So, please uh, pause the video and try to sort of write the equations only, KCL equations for the super nodes here. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to write that. So the case of super node 1, 2 is this. V1 divided by d V1 minus 0 divided by 2. V1 minus V4 divided by 3. And you have minus 10 coming, 10 coming in, which means minus 10 is the outgoing current in this branch. And V2 minus V3 divided by 6 is the outgoing current of this branch. So you have 1. 
KCL for supernova 1, 1 and 2 and you have another KCL for supernova 3 and 4. You have 4 unknowns here so we need to apply KVL twice one for this voltage source and another for this voltage source to obtain 4 equations. Now you can solve it. You have 4 unknowns and 4 equations. Now you don't have to, when you're trying to solve the problems by hand, you don't have to solve problems that has more than three non-reference nodes. So I included the problem anyway so that we can practice this. But uh, it's not necessary to solve problems that has more than three non-reference nodes when you're trying to solve the problems by hand. Okay, so here's another problem. Please try to write the KCL and then uh, match the answer. So please try to write the KCL. Okay, so we have two consecutive super nodes here, V1, V2, and V2, V3. So we consider them as one super node, V1, V2, V3, and we write one equation. And then we take two KVLs across the two voltage sources, this one and this one, to end up with two more equations that will help us to solve the problem. So this is the final answer. So hopefully you have a clear idea what nodal analysis is. So try to solve as many problems as you can and then let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.